In Sitka, the crack of dawn can be very early. In the summer, the sun rises as early as 4 a.m. This is Sitka, a city on Baranoff Island in the Alexander Archipelago in southeastern Alaska. For centuries, Sitka was a Tlingit Indian village. In 1799, a large Russian trading company established a settlement at a site a few miles north of the village and called it Redoubt St. Michael. This Russian outpost was to be the center of the profitable fur trade along the Pacific Northwest coast. The Russians did not get along well with the Tlingit. In 1802, the Indians destroyed Redoubt St. Michael and most of its inhabitants. The Russians returned in 1804 with several hundred men and several ships. The Indians took position in a strategically placed log and earthen fort designed to resist the cannon fire from the ships. Even though this was a new type of warfare for them, the Sitka Tlingit were well prepared. Under the leadership of Catlian of the Kiksani clan and of the other clan leaders, they successfully resisted the Russian assaults. But by the seventh night, the Sitkins had run out of ammunition, and they had to abandon the fort under cover of darkness. They moved overland to the north side of the island and did not return for several years. The Russians claimed the best of the old Clinket village site and built warehouses, bunkhouses, and a stockade around the new town, which they called New Archangel. They also built a mansion on the site of the Kiksadi clan houses on the bluff above the new town. This mansion became known as Baranoff Castle. After a number of years, the Tlingit returned to resume the trade interrupted by the conflict with the Russians. They occupied what is now called the Indian village outside the stockade. New Archangel, or Sitka as people went on calling it, became the capital of Russian America, and for a long time it was the only city on the west coast of North America. It had schools, a seminary, a hospital, an observatory, boat building yards, and sawmills, and a glittering social life. It also had a remarkable Russian Orthodox cathedral. In those days, San Francisco was a tiny frontier settlement, and Los Angeles a sleepy Mexican mission village. But by 1865, there were too few sea otter left to hunt. The other Russian ventures in America did not fare too well, and the Russian government got tired of subsidizing a money-losing operation so far away. The Russian Empire sold Alaska to the United States for $7,200,000. Not a bad deal, considering how little of it it actually owned. In 1867, the Russian double eagle was lowered and replaced with the Stars and Stripes on Castle Hill in Sitka. Most of the Russians returned to Russia. A relatively quiet time followed. Baranov Castle, the governor's mansion, was abandoned. It burned down in 1894, and another building erected in its place was eventually torn down. Sitka remained the capital of Alaska until the title went to the gold mining town of Juneau in 1912. In 1912 also, the Alaska Native Brotherhood was founded in Sitka to work for justice and dignity for the American Indian. It is now the oldest continuing Indian organization in North America. The Clinket had always relied on fishing, but in the 1920s, commercial fishing became important in Sitka and canneries were built. During World War II, Sitka was the site of major military installations. 
Japonsky Island and the surrounding islands were heavily fortified, and a hospital and barracks for some 3,500 men were built. Today, about 8,500 people make their home in Sitka, the fifth largest city in Alaska. The roads end a few miles out of town, and the only way in and out of Sitka is still by plane or by boat. A pulp mill was built in the late 1950s. Other jobs come from fishing, two large fish processing plants, education, and all the businesses one would expect in a typical American small town. Sitka is also a favorite destination for tourists and convention goers. Visitors come by air, by ferry, and by cruise ship. Spectacular boat tours are available. If you look right up at the top of this blow down and the tallest dead tree you can see a very large eagle nest. It's eight or ten feet from the top of the tree. There's a green bush growing out of the right side of it. As we move forward more, that nest will come skylined and be a lot easier to see. Sitting down lower in the blowdown is another eagle. Sitting up 100 feet above the water, back up a ways from the shore. And then and there's another one down here closer, just one of the first trees off of the beach, up uh, 40 feet or so. Knowledgeable Sitkins conduct informative bus tours of the historical and scenic highlights of the town. For those who prefer to walk, Sitka is compact enough for a leisurely visit on foot. Many things make Sitka unique. The spectacular scenery changes constantly with the weather and the seasons. The majestic mountains.
St. Lazaria Island in Sitka Sound is a protected nesting site for thousands of marine birds. Bird watchers can observe shearwaters, oyster catchers, cormorants, terns, murres, puffins, and eagles. Murres nest on inaccessible guano-covered cliffs. And the horned puffins are common in this part of Sitka Sound. We have large minority groups of Clinkett and other Alaska natives. There is also a sizable Filipino community. However, Sitka is truly an integrated town where we all live harmoniously together. Other groups draw their inspiration from Sitka's Russian history.
Year-round, Sitka is alive with community activities, which range from the annual Salmon Derby to plays, concerts, sports tournaments, and even parades. Maybe because of the isolation, people participate much more in community activities. This small city even has a daily newspaper, and just about everyone has a subscription. Each June, world-class musicians gather in Sitka for the Sitka Summer Music Festival. And many town people and visitors pack the Centennial Building for a superb music experience. Meanwhile, a writer's symposium brings together famous and aspiring authors. In July, artists from around the Pacific Northwest teach at the annual Fine Arts Camp for junior and senior high school students. Four. Four points. There are a total of 12 points for Dan Swinstrom. Rudy Detmore up next, Dan Strykart on deck. Sitka hosts the All-Alaska Logging Championships, and a huge 4th of July celebration provides a variety of attractions where townspeople mingle with summer visitors. On a single hand bucking, Mike Sullivan with 1 minute 32.22 seconds, Mel Lentz 57.03 seconds, and Mel is in first place at this time. Rudy Detmer in second, and Dan Swinstrom in third, in the single hand bucking at this time. Again, while Ed's making his cut up there. In October, the anniversary of the 1867 flag ceremony at Castle Hill is the occasion for more festivities. Sitka boasts a modern, well-equipped hospital, a television station, and two radio stations, three full-service banks, and a savings and loans branch, and highly rated elementary and high schools. Islands Community College, which is part of the University of Alaska system, serves Sitka and the outlying towns and villages. Shelton Jackson College was established at the turn of the century as a training school for Alaska Natives, 
but evolved into an accredited college with programs in fisheries and forestry management, teacher education, and business. Several air services provide transportation to remote forest service cabins, lakes, and outlying villages. But Sitka does not forget its history. Sheldon Jackson Museum houses one of the world's finest collection of Alaska native artifacts. And the Isabel Miller Museum has many reminders of Sitka's historical past. There are many signs of the Indian history and culture around town. The site of the last battle between the Clinket and the Russians is now a national historical park. At the visitor's center, a display of Indian and Russian artifacts recalls the early days of Russian America. At the Southeast Alaska Indian Cultural Center, artists demonstrate and teach the traditional clinket arts of beading, silver carving, and wood carving and design. Traditional Northwest Coast Indian art is based on a few beautiful, simple shapes combined into highly stylized and striking designs. The same design principles are used on totem poles, which have been gathered at Sitka National Historical Park. The totem poles are the monuments of the Northwest Coast Indians. Some represent clan or family histories. Some are erected on special occasions. Others yet are memorial poles in honor of the deceased person of high rank. The animals and figures on the poles represent clans or creatures from the Indian legends or history. The Russian past of Sitka is also apparent around town. The National Park Service has been restoring the Russian Bishop's House, built in 1842. This was the home of Bishop Inokente Vinyaminov, who later became Saint Innocent, Apostle to Alaska. The Cathedral of Saint Michael, consecrated in 1848, was destroyed by fire in 1966 but the townspeople managed to save virtually all of the icons and furnishings of the church. The cathedral was consecrated again in 1982, an exact replica of the original, with the original inside decoration and priceless artwork. Near where the stockade stood, separating the Russian city from the Indian village, the replica of a blockhouse stands guard. In the Russian cemetery nearby, old graves slowly returned to the forest. Sitka was a major trading town in its Russian days, and it is a trading town today. In fact, it is a shopper's paradise. Friendly, well-appointed stores offer a wide variety of souvenirs and authentic native handicrafts from the different native groups of Alaska. The Russian touch can be found in authentic Russian icons and finely painted lacquer boxes. While some stores specialize in original artwork, others offer unique and quaint souvenirs. Modern Alaskan and Sitka artists sell their work in art galleries. For a more practical taste, designs can be transferred to t-shirts and other clothing. Collectors will find minerals of the area. Sitka also has one of the few stores on the west coast specializing in antique maps. A variety of restaurants cater to all tastes. An 
visitors to Sitka have a choice of fine hotels. Housing costs are high in Sitka, pretty much on a par with the nicer parts of the San Francisco Bay Area. Though Alaska salaries are often high, the cost of living is high too, since most consumer goods and groceries have to be shipped in by air or by sea. Why do we choose to live in Sitka then? It has something to do with the quality of life in a small town for sure. But where else can you have a bald eagle perching in your backyard? Whales off the front yard. Baby salmon in the streams, who when they grow up will return from the sea by the thousands to spawn in their native creeks. And the lush rainforest at the end of the street. The Sitka rose, the Sitka black-tailed deer, and the majestic Sitka spruce were named for Sitka. Sitka, as the rest of southeast Alaska, is famous for its moderate but damp climate. Except that we don't call this rain. We call it liquid sunshine, or sometimes southeastern sunshine. Rain has never stopped us from doing anything. We are prepared. Most of the downtown sidewalks are covered. And even though you won't see too many umbrellas, we usually have waterproof clothing within easy reach. We hate to admit it, but we also get plenty of the dry sunshine here in Sitka. Mm -hmm. 